Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Gone Kayaking with me, Clayton. And me, Darren. And yet again, I'm not there because you, Darren, went on holiday with Ross Erdesey, Captain Chris, didn't you? Didn't we you? did. Mm, you did, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Should have come. Yes, well, I would have done if I wasn't working. Classic. Uh, where did you go? <laughs> we are in Menorca. Lovely. And uh, a sign of Menorca, probably not many people will go to see, I guess, because effectively Captain Chris had, had sailed out there and you've gone uh, with Rosser to join him specifically so you can spend some time on the boat and some time in a kayak. Exactly. He's been working his way around from the UK to Menorca at the moment. And this was a local fish popped up to say hello. I'm free! No, I'm not. I'm free! Yeah, no, I'm not. Kind of how it goes, I guess, if you're a fish, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. You can't <laughs> yeah. keep that up forever. So, tell me and the everybody watching all about it. Where exactly in Menorca are you? What's happening here? Talk. We started in Esgral, which is on the eastern end of the island. And we hired the boats for the day from Menorca and Kayak. It must have taken a wee while to come up with that name. And... Um, We've got the three boats there, which was a, a Perception Essence, 16 for the captain and 17 for me, because I'm big, and um, a Wilderness Tempest for Rossa. Suits her personality. Yeah. Then. Sorry, Rossa, I didn't mean it. <laughs> now, you hired them from Menorca and Kayak uh, for the day. How much were they each? It was about 50 euros each boat for the day. Good value. Well, it's, it's a shame when you've got a garden full of boats at home, but there you go. It was very difficult to put a Valkyrie on EasyJet. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can I, can I get this in oversize? Uh, no, sir. We can't. Yeah, will it fit under the next seat? Oh, well, no. Yeah. No, it certainly won't. But yeah, 50 euro and um, decent nick. They look like they're okay. They're decent boats. I mean, yeah, we're a bit spoilt with the posh Valkyries and other toys that we have at home, but um, they're perfectly decent boats. It's all in good condition. And look at that, I mean, the weather. I mean, we talk about how nice the weather is when we're out around the south coast. And actually, some of the footage we're looking at now looks not too dissimilar to us going around the south coast. But a couple of big differences. The water was warm as hell. It was wonderful. And and crystal clear pretty much everywhere. Look at that. It was super clear, yeah. What did you do? Where were you going then? Just through a little gap. Of course you were. <laughs> Uh, for those people that watch our videos, you've seen us go around the Solon and we talk about the tides, the wind, the uh, tide races, wind over tide and uh, it, all things like that. Here, Darren, did any of that have to be taken into consideration? What was the planning for this trip? The tides, absolutely non-existent, which is really easy. It's a bit like cheating, really. But um, the wind, obviously, yeah, it's still a huge body of water, so the wind has a big effect and you'll see by the end of... At uh, the end of this day, we were almost doing a downwind surf run again back to the boat. Oh, so you actually had some wind pushing you home, that's nice. Indeed. Well, that's a, a plus for that, so well prepared then, knew that was going to happen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. Mind you, if, the, if you had, the, had a headwind, if you were going back into the wind, being where you are, would, would that have made much of a difference? You could have still done it, but it's obviously a lot less fun going into the wind than it is going downwind. What kind of speed were you getting up to? I don't know, probably, um, did you take a, any note of how fast you were able to get going at any point? Uh, the fastest bits were probably short runs where we were catching waves and close to beaches. It is an absolutely spectacular view, it has to be said, looking at that and just I can't get over how clear the water is. And I guess as well, uh, yeah, a lot warmer than it is um, right now in the solar. It was ridiculously clear and ridiculously warm. So yeah, really quite enjoyed it. It's great to be out without my uh, rubber suit. Yeah. <laughs> and less said about your rubber suit, the better, I think. <laughs> but there, you, it's you've only got on to, weekends. Um, yeah, talking of rubber, uh, well, neoprene. We are going to be testing some stuff from uh, from Lomo, Lomo, Lomo. Lomo, I'm told. It is Lomo, and uh, that will be another episode to come at some point. Right now, though, no need for anything like that. Just sunglasses on, enjoying the view. Look at that. That's spectacular. It was amazing. I was uh, ogling that little house up there on the hill, actually. Chris and I were arguing over who was going to get it. Ex 
exactly. And where are you coming into now? It looks like a, like a, a deserted inlet. It's just one of the little bays. There was an estuary over behind the beach. Um, you can see it on the map, and you can see the line of trees there. I can't remember the name of that. Looking closely at the map again. So a, little, a few waves to contend with, but nothing much really to, to worry about. Ross, are okay with it all? At this point, yes. You'll see coming up shortly, we got to a point where the swells were coming in and hitting the cliff, bouncing back. And so you've got the, well, this is it exactly right here. So we were just looking really whether we go around the outside or straight through the middle of it. Oh, I go which way you would have gone, even without thinking about it. But that's, uh, so what yeah. was the consensus? Consensus was we went straight through the middle of it because yeah. it looked like fun. Of course it did. And everyone was okay with that? Everyone was fine with it, but... Um, yeah, you can see here, it's not really as bad as it looked from a distance, but from a distance you could see there were three sort of rapidly splashy bits that were all in line, so they actually all looked like they were part of the same thing, so it looked quite dramatic from the way off, but once you're in place it's not that bad. So you've been out in the, in the boat for a while now, it's not your Valkyrie, it's your Perception 17, because you're the, the big lad. Uh, what were the key differences? What did you notice in terms of differences in taking the Perception out as opposed to being in your nice shiny Valkyrie. You can sort of feel it being a little bit more flexible as it goes over the rougher water. Um, it's more of a traditional shape so it doesn't need the rudder at all. It does have a skeg which I used on the way back with the wind behind us. But um, in general it's a perfectly decent boat really. Uh, the outfitting is probably not as, not as adjustable and snug as your, as your Valkyrie but then again it's probably quite a different price bracket. Oh, this is it, isn't it? I mean, in terms of, I mean, when I look at that, and I look there, it looked just like a red version of your blue boat. I mean, that's to the untrained eye, which is me. Um, are we talking fine differences, or are we talking really noticeable differences? They are noticeable. I mean, if you just hop in from fresh, I guess, and you're, you're beginning in either or both, you probably even find this one's more comfortable and a bit more predictable than the Valkyrie. But... Um, it's the different type of plastic, so this is a single layer where the Valkyrie is the three layer, which makes it a little bit lighter and a little bit more rigid. Now this one, you can feel it's actually flexing over the waves as you as you push it around a bit. And um, while there's a bit more leg room and, and space to stretch around in this than the Valkyrie, where you've got a lower deck in places. But um, the the outfitting, the seat, the adjustments, etc., you can't just ratchet it all up so it's all nice and snug. Where the Valkyrie is almost sort of hugging you like some sort of a white water boat and this one doesn't really you sort of flop around a bit. Uh, what's the little yellow boy you were going past? Yeah that's a very good point uh, we actually got told off there one of the <laughs> rangers came and gave us a bit of a whipping because um, they marked the swimming area and we were <laughs> kayaking and surfing and then landed on the beach in the swimming area so we came over and pointed out that that was a naughty thing to do and uh, when we left the beach, this is why we're launching into the pea soup, which is just outside the swimming area. And um, yeah, certainly worth noting if you're going paddling in uh, Menorca, stay outside the yellow boys so or you get told off. Oh dear, naughty Darren. Luckily, you speak Spanish, so you're able to apologise and probably surprised him a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think he's beyond surprising, I think. <laughs> he was all transmit, no receive. Excellent. So the job's worth got his job done and now you can get back out catch a few more waves and try and clear some of that muck off the boat exactly he's captain chris trying to get out of his little corner there as well <laughs> was there anyone actually swimming at the time there were a few people but yeah i mean there weren't huge huge crowds swimming and obviously we weren't out there trying to dive bomb them with kayaks but um no you're not in rules a is rules and all that exactly you're not in a speed boat or one of those silly what do you call them, jet skis, they're pretty easy to, uh, to see and you're not that quick. <laughs> Look who's talking. <laughs> so I had a little stop off and then back out again. You're still heading away from the boat, you're heading back to, to Chris's boat now. We're now heading back to Chris's boat, so okay. we come out to this point um, following the coast and into every little cove and nook and cranny and then we just cut straight back across the gap on the way back, so we've now got a tailwind. Look at that, it looks like someone's coloured the sea blue, it's properly blue isn't it's it? It's exactly, yeah, it's, it's the same, it's the, the way you see the sea when you're out in the proper open ocean, you don't have that sort of murky green that you see around the English Channel. And now it's gone from blue to a, to a lovely greeny colour. So there's Captain Chris's boat. What's it called? It's called Sukawi. Sukawi. <laughs> ah! 
Tsukawi, which actually means something very special because it's Chris's sisters, isn't it? It's the first few letters of their names. So that's lovely that he's named a boat after his three sisters. I think his dad did, actually. Right, there you go. His dad did. Near Even enough. Better. Even better. So, and now, and now Chris, what's he... Chris, no! What's he doing? He was just checking out if I'd scratched the boat. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've, we've got this glorious, clean, warm water, so it seemed a bit rude not to go and play with some rolls. Well, he so made that look very easy. He did, and you'll see, he went on to do a million more, which was good, I mean... It's one of those things when it's cold and horrible and um, in the UK there's not a lot of incentive to practice your roles. Uh, yeah, it's, that's excellent actually. Is Chris was competent at doing roles before this or not? He's done some before, but it's um, it's not always a 100% success rate. So uh, as you see on some of the, the intros we've had in the past, he's, he's had a few where he's done most of the way up and then <laughs> dive back in for a quick swim. Get to the get to the air, and he's back under again. But this is looking good, and I guess as well, um, you know, it, it's this is nice. It's flat, it's calm, it's pretty easy, and it's nice to practice um, as you're doing. And away you go. You've gone all the way round, so you went down and come back up the other way. Chris is going down and coming back up the same way. Yeah, well, Chris is left-handed, which um, slightly novel and made it a bit of a challenge actually because they didn't have left-handed paddles for him on <laughs> at um, Minorcan kayak uh, so he had I'm to... going to stop you there um, left-handed paddles <laughs> it's like a left-handed screwdriver but, but not so good at screw <laughs> uh, it, it depends which hand you're using for your power and for whatever reason he does everything right-handed but not paddling ok and so how does that affect the paddle itself then if it's a difference. I thought all paddles were the same. The blades are feathered back to front. Okay. Well that's interesting to know. So it's a bit like I suppose um, when you take an archery lesson and to know which hand you hold the bow with and which hand you hold the arrow with, it might not necessarily mean just because you're right handed you hold it or you're left handed you hold it with a certain hand. You, you actually have to take a test. You look down and you um, close one eye and then the instructor says right actually you need to hold it in this hand. That's Bizarrely. the sort of thing. If you go s snowboarding, for instance, the first question, which foot forward? Same deal, really. There's no right or wrong. It's just once you get used to one, it's a right pain to change. So Chris, an absolute expert at this now. We can have a little look as well. And look at that. I mean, that's magnificent. You don't get any clearer than that. Well, that just looks like he's gone over and just, he's just come back up. There seems to be little, uh, very little oar action, paddle action. Or some. Now, you can see... What we were trying to sort out, you can see on some of these where his body's coming up first. So we were trying to get him to concentrate on bringing his body up last, which is where technique, I guess, overrides a little bit of brute force. This is in slow motion. And that was more what we were looking for. So he was lying back across the deck once he was up. So you need a lot less power to do it. And then if you're doing this in anger, in rough sea or whatever, a lot more likely that you're going to get up. And this was where he's gone back to getting his body up first. But fortunately, he's got big enough lungs to sort it out. Yeah, just getting that movement, isn't it? That was uh, it's pretty good. And just because he can, yes. Yay, well done, Chris. <laughs> Captain Cocky. <laughs> <laughs> one must show off when one has the opportunity. Lovely. And uh, time to clean the, the boats, make sure they go back in the uh, same yeah, condition. Quick clean them. up. The guys, the higher high, the boat high guys were so insistent that, yeah, had to go back all nice and clean, so go a good scrub. And just because you can, the camera's still on, you can still see how ridiculously clean the water is. That's amazing, isn't it? A thoroughly good time had by all then. Yep, and one for luck. There he goes again. <laughs> Come on, let me come. Well done. Well, it looks like you've had a, a, a fabulous day. Topped off with... Um, although Rosa didn't come out with the last bit, did she? was catching a few she rays. She didn't bother with the rolls. She was lying there. We had a bit of lunch in the meantime, which wasn't shown on here. So she's playing Princess of Monaco on the, beat, on, on the boat there. So pick her up, take the boats back in. 
question. Once you'd taken the boat back in, the kayaks back in, how did you get back to the boat? Go swim. No, we um, we had uh, Captain Chris's little tender little rowing boat. Okay. Stop, people! <laughs> yeah, we've never heard that before. No, you can say it every time. Not a care in the world. Not a life jacket either. <laughs> oh, it looks, looks lovely. And in terms of... So, flew out to Menorca. Um, what's that, hour and a bit on the airplane? Easy jet, was it a couple of hours? Or two, two and a bit, something okay. like that. Nice. Um, from Bournemouth? From Gatwick, Ooh. unfortunately. Ooh, unlucky. Mm. And then how long to get from the airport to the boat? It's not far. I would say, I don't know, probably 20 minutes or so. Oh, okay. we just um, Well, we headed into Esgrau, which is where we are now, just coming back to take the boats back in. As it happened, the weather had been a bit rubbish, so there was still a massive swell coming over the bar there. So we, um, we actually had to walk up over into the next bay and Captain Chris picked us up from the next bay round. Cool. Uh, that was Arossa just trying to, pr practicing to do a, a, a role, an assisted role, but then... Um, she did, as luck would have it, schoolboy error, we ran out of battery just before she actually did a final glory-filled role. Nice. So uh, boats dropped off, back at the main boat, and this is uh, the 360, kind of acting a little bit squiffy as we you had a little look at the bottom of the boat, didn't you? Yeah, sadly, the, there's a stitching line between the two lenses on the camera and it's just lined up perfectly with what we were trying to look at. Fascinating nonetheless, as was your little boat trip as well, which looked pretty cool. Nice way to end your, your trip and good use of the 360. Well, look, we hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, there are going to be plenty more to come. We're going to just show you the map of the, of the trip. Uh, three hours, 14 k's, lovely day had. And I guess as well, the, the ease at which to be able to hire a kayak means you don't need to have your own and take it around with you. If you can hire one, 50 euro if you're abroad, an opportunity to get out and have a paddle. That's what it all looked like. We hope you've enjoyed the video from myself, Clayton. And me, Darren. Until next time, stay safe, people. Hello, everybody. It's Gone Kayaking. G'day, sport. Loving it.